I used to take the worksheets home from my elementary school and teach kids on the block different subjects. So it's like it's in my blood. When you make it through, if you are a person that is a leader, a person that is concerned about others, you want to share that. I wanted to share and pass along a love of the things that I loved, art and classical music. It's part of human heritage, what all of us have a right to. If I wanted to, if I wanted to make money, I could have went into a whole different career. But I think from a young age, I knew that I was fine going to the grave without, you know, a big bank balance. I don't know, I get to be me when I'm teaching, and I like to see that the students get to be themselves. To be able to serve, that to me is the greatest gift. I want all my students to feel that they are in a safe environment. Why do cats meow? Why do ducks quack? I am a born teacher. The Abraham Lincoln Schimmel and Beatrice Schimmel uh, awards to teachers and people who do things like librarians who also do teaching. The whole idea is to give them the tools and the opportunity and the resources so that they can develop new approaches to integrating leadership, training, and education with a range of the humanities. I am the librarian at McKinley Technology Education Campus, and I work with both middle and high school students. What people probably don't know about what librarians do now is that we're not just all about books. So I guess if I had to make a metaphor for what I do as a librarian, a construction supervisor, because I'm looking at the blueprint for what has to go down for the entire year, like not only in the library, but like the school's vision. And then I have to find the right people, the right tools, the right ideas in order to make it happen. I have always, since I became an English teacher in 2000, wanted to put together a literary magazine of my students' work. The problem has always been the lack of funding and maybe a little bit on that end, a lack of a vision that that is something that is important for students to be able to do. And what the Schimmel Award is going to allow my students and I to do is to produce the magazine, get it published at a level of quality. Students will form their own editorial board. They will call for selections from their peers. They will decide on the format, how it will be divided into sections, the title of the literary magazine, the art and photography that we will include, and they'll make all the final decisions. Students will read from their work in a forum where we can invite in their parents, community members, teachers, also their peers again. I rely on students who are in the extracurricular activities to be my library advisory group. When it first started out, it was so powered and driven by adults, and especially me. So I made the agenda. I pretty much facilitated the meeting. I was pushing everyone to be there. I was putting up the signs for events. Complete transition now. Now I have students who are at the height in their leadership potential and ability where they're able to facilitate the meetings, make the agenda, and they are really running and pushing the organization. I can't think of a day that goes by where I'm not inspired by a student. The ultimate goal of this is for them to feel the power of their voice to see their words in print and see other people reading it, to have people validate their experiences, their art, their words. I think that it will take writing from being this thing they just have to do in school to something that is living for generations on. I'm the founder, executive director, and president of Double Nichols Theater Company. It's a reminiscence theater company, which means we like giving productions of true life stories of seniors and veterans while they can still hear their applause. This is a story of the life of a, of a resident of the Armed Forces Retirement Home. Consider the wealth of stories that you have in a retirement facility. Today, frequently, young people don't have the opportunity to live in the same house with grandparents, great-grandparents. What we do is celebrate that coming together of seniors and juniors we write stories, we, we collect the life stories. The exciting thing about this, the seniors are interviewed by young people 
who learn how to interview, who are awed by some of the experiences of some of the residents, and who get to work with us to edit this content, learn how to put it together, ask questions. They do a lot, and the seniors pridefully give them their stories with a product at the end. When we talk about showing young people how to become viable adults, how to be leaders or teach leadership, what is it that we're asking them to do? Frankly, most of the time we're asking them to mimic us. Frequently in our relationships with youngsters, they are either on the basis of control or authority. Well, Double Nichols Theater Company believes that to establish confidence, to demonstrate that we do respect, that they do have thoughts and concerns and issues to handle, that the answers are not always clear. We share with them an experience of our own where we weren't sure, where we made a mistake and how we came back. Once you find that you can do that with someone younger, someone a couple of generations away from you, they look at you differently. They recognize that you're sharing. I'm the chair of the Department of Fine Arts here at St. Anselm's Abbey School. And what that really means is that my job is to make teenagers interested in art history and music history. I teach a humanities curriculum, art history, music history, and the history of literature. So the study of the arts to help illuminate the study of human history. So one of the ways that we can approach the question of leadership is to look at images of important leaders. This particular uh, unit that we're working on right now in the ancient Near East has uh, several examples of leaders, some who are very strong and used military might and fear, and others who ruled through different kinds of power and influence. Next. Who has some thoughts, yeah. Uh, well, he would have wanted to be known as a uh, god king because okay. he is uh, putting himself... When I found out that I had won the award, I was here at school and I immediately shared it with some of my students. They were very excited to get to share um, what they were doing in class. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I hope that it helps students, if they do end up in positions of leadership, to think about how they are perceived and what sorts of images they might um, be able to create for themselves or stories that they can create and how important the history of the arts has been to leaders of all kinds, good and bad. Just this summer, I reconnected with my high school uh, AP English teacher, who uh, was a great inspiration to me. And it was not just the books that he asked us to read. He was uh, interested in American studies. He was a commentator on the radio. He hosted a, a program on jazz. He was also very interested in the history of film, and he opened up for me an intellectual world um, growing up in Michigan that I really did not know at all, and so I just wanted to let him know he had inspired me to come and do something quite similar to what he had done as a high school teacher. I do hope that uh, other teachers, may, perhaps who have not considered incorporating this sort of material in classes. Um, could, could perhaps see the benefits of it or how it might apply to a student's study of leadership just as a different way to approach history. So. I'm the executive director and co-founder of One Common Unity. We're a nonprofit organization here in Washington, D.C., uh, started in the year 2000. We are working through an after-school program at four different high schools around the city. We're really, really excited about being recipients of the Schimmel Award to support one of our facilitators, specifically at our Cardozo High School site. The Fly By Light Youth Program was a culmination of about 10 years of previous curriculum and youth programming, and we kind of took the best practices, artistic expression, health and wellness, community engagement and leadership and social justice, along with emotional literacy. I think the young people that come into our program, because of the quality of our facilitators, they, there's a seismic shift in the trajectory of their life, and they begin to think about the world in a new way. 
There's nothing that makes me more happy to see like one of the youth in our programs like coming out of the program with like a glow on their face, you know? Like a sense of like, wow, maybe the whole world isn't out to get me. Like maybe there is something I can do. We do a lot of work around inner peace and peace building and conflict resolution, but they're most excited about our trips. Once a month, we take those young people on an excursion to somewhere around the DC metropolitan area, like a national park or a different historical monument in DC where we kind of unpack and learn about the history of the area. The last part of the program is an intensive rites of passage overnight retreat that happens in the summer. Six nights, seven days of intense work in the great outdoors. Most of our young people are with us for about a year, but by the end of that year, I think they really created a new sense of purpose. And they've changed the way they relate to the world, and they've understood more profoundly how they can affect the world through their leadership. I taught theater arts at Ballou Senior High School for five years, and this year I am in my first year of teaching English at Eastern Senior High School. What I really do is, I love Shakespeare, so I'm gonna say it as Shakespeare would say it. I tell you that what you yourself do know. All teachers do is bring out what you already know. The project that received the Schimmel Award is based on self-image. There is value in just being yourself. Physical characteristics. You guys wrote it up here, I was just asking. So your personality can make you... The anchor text that we're using is The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. It focuses on not just tragedy that can happen within families, but also self-image. And we'll bring in other texts. The Colored Museum by George C. Wolfe, the play, and bringing in the baby doll test and bringing in archetypes that exist within um, the black community. And they will design the focus of their particular group project. Funny, loving, current person that knows how to speak up when I need to and... It's the humanities, which means it's the collection of all of the disciplines. You know, we want to honor that as a whole and how our students become leaders. We're going to give you the funding to do what you want to do. I was like, wow, that sounds really great, and didn't, didn't think of myself at all. There's actually two separate colleagues. They said, that's what you do every day. I guess I'll give you the examples they gave me. I'm in a fellowship, so sometimes we had to go out of town. And so one time I was absent, and they said, your substitute didn't show up. But of course, nobody knew because your students were sitting outside of your classroom just sitting on the floor quietly doing work. At the time, we were rehearsing Twelfth Night, which is a Shakespeare play. And, and that security came around. Why are you guys sitting here? And they were like, but we're not bothering anybody. We're OK. Um, we're doing the work. We would rather sit outside her classroom than have to go to another classroom um, where someone might give us idle work that's not related to the course or where we end up not doing what it is that she asked us to do. I do think that together we help create a safe environment. If people feel safe, they will take risk and they will do anything. They will not understand something and say, you know, I don't understand because they feel safe. And then we can all move forward. And I'd like to tell you a little bit about the Shimmel Load because it doesn't fit into a neat category. My mother and I started it in 1998 because we wanted to make sure that, uh, that the money from their hard work as teachers, my father in the South Bronx and my mother in Harlem, would be used while we were alive and we would have some kind of influence on how it was used. And the idea basically that we provide small amounts of seed money plus free consulting services and that's why we call it a load because it's a source. So one of the reasons why the Schimmel Load and the Humanities Council of Washington DC have such a good match is because we deal with all ages, we deal with a range of, of disciplines, we deal with um, promoting self-sufficiency, we deal with entertainment and having fun, and we deal with very serious things like human development and community development. We really wanted to combine the humanities with leadership development. 
I think the humanities are the base, or they form the foundation. What's really powerful is, is being able to connect the dots between leadership and the humanities. You're really trying to capture the whole person. Oh, hi, Miss Poe! <laughs> and in order to do that, it has to be interdisciplinary. And you have to also have a collaborative approach because it's a, an ongoing process. If you're not learning on a constant basis, and how do you share and help other people to learn themselves?